Hey Glam Fam, welcome back. Today we're getting into episode two of Real Housewives of Atlanta. First of all, we need to talk about how there are no taglines right now. I didn't notice it last episode because I was just so excited for the premiere. But you know, now that we settled in, Atlanta is officially back. Where are the taglines? Now, if they're doing the same thing they did with Potomac, then we should have the taglines by the next episode. I think they did the taglines for Potomac in the third episode. But like, what's the point of that? Is that the new thing? Are we waiting a few episodes to drop the taglines now? So we pick up at the party and Sheree is asking Kenya about this Martel DM. Kenya said it was about six months ago. We find out later with, with how long it really was. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side, Candy and Courtney are still going at it. Like they really about to fight. I'm dealing with, I want you to tell me. No, 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 bitch. No, no, okay, you no, 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 okay, you know what? No, 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 no. What's going on? No. What happened? Did you keep doing this in my face? <laughs> then they go back to Kenya and Sheree because she called Martell over. Martel pretty much said that the rumors were not true. You know, they seem to be unbothered. So Sanya goes to check on Candy, and this is where Candy learns that they had already had previous conversations about Candy. Now, I don't know why Candy expected Sonya to be loyal to her. Sonya is a flip-flopper. <laughs> um, and in my opinion, she's more of Marlo's friend than Candy's anyway. So I don't know what she expects. She just don't want to get on Candy's bad side. That's all. Meanwhile, Marlo is minding her business gambling. <laughs> she is the only one behaving. Oh, are you taking my money? Now, how am I the only one behaving? I'm appalled. Therapy works, y'all. I'm telling you, seek it. Kenya gathers the girls um, because she wants to talk about why Candy is heated. <laughs> Sonya wants no parts of this. She's trying to change the subject, but they end up changing it to uh, Sheree and Martell. <laughs> So Sanya left. She was over it. She wanted to focus on her man party. They were talking to Sheree about the rumors and Sheree was pretty much like, if you gonna tell me something, bring the receipts, honey. And Candy goes, oh, you want receipts? Okay, well, he actually did DM Kenya. So they show Sheree the DM request. They show Martell and this is where it escalates. Now, him and Kenya start going at it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when they first started going at it and Kenya was calling him aggressive and all of that, I didn't feel like he was being aggressive in that moment. He did end up getting aggressive and prove her right, but he wasn't aggressive in that moment. Can, can, can this yours? Can phone. she talk? You are so aggressive, Martell. I'm oh, scared no. of you. <laughs> I guess when no, someone accusing was... you of something, I guess you can um, defend yourself. I'm not yourself. accusing you of anything. Go to her messages right now and see, I bet she probably accepted everybody's message. So Martel pulls out his DM. So, you know, him and Kenya going back and forth and Candy is instigating. Miss Don't Talk About My Money or My Man is over here instigating. So Mary, yeah, General. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm denying. I don't know okay, you. Okay, cool. Oh, he's denying you? that he sent you a message. Pull it up. So then Martel pulls out his DMs and he actually shows them what he sent Kenya, which was from two years ago, not six months ago. No, 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 no,
who the F you talking to? He said, so what if I was trying to F you? Like, he wasn't cursing at her. And that's what I don't like about Kenya. She always does that. When men don't allow her to pick on them or talk to them any kind of way, she calls them aggressive. So I really wasn't feeling how she kept doing that. He did not curse at you. And she constantly accuses men of being aggressive and abusive. She did the same thing with Ross last season. When a man responds to her, she want to call him aggressive. I don't know if she believes that she's allowed to say whatever she wants to men or she can do whatever she wants and they're not allowed to respond. But we can't keep calling every man that doesn't allow you to talk to them crazy aggressive. We can't do that. However, what she said when she went in on him was warranted. I will give her that. <laughs> And then her and Sheree ended up getting into it because Sheree felt like it was unnecessary for her to bring the DM up. And I, I'm gonna have to agree with Sheree and Martel on this one. I, it was pointless. It's like the equivalent when you get a new man and one of your friends is like, girl, he used to try to talk to me. And it was like four years ago. Like, who cares? Even though I do not care for Sheree and Martel, I have to agree with them. I don't understand why Kenya brought the DM up and tried to make it seem like it was more recent than what it was. But y'all let me know what y'all thought about that in the comment section down below. So yeah, that was the end of the party. Next, we finally see Drew. I didn't even realize Drew wasn't in <laughs> the premiere until y'all said it in the comments. But yeah, we finally see Drew. Um, she was getting back from Chicago from being with her father because he's uh he has Alzheimer's and he's in a nursing home. Okay, so now that we know that the family issues were real, why the heck wasn't Rob with her? But yeah, Drew's getting back into her music. Um, Drew can sing. Like, she can really sing. She has a really nice voice um she released a new single and i noticed that on that album cover she had her reunion outfit and there's nothing wrong with it i just noticed it <laughs> it was like girl you used a reunion photo <laughs> so ralph is filling her in on the drama from the party and apparently ralph and courtney are cousins so Sonya and Candy go out for, I think they went out to dinner. And they talk about BravoCon coming up. And looks like we gonna get some BravoCon footage and tea in the next episode. But yeah, Sonya and Candy, they're venting. They're giving each other updates on their lives. Up until this scene, I didn't really think they were that close. So now I see why Candy probably feels like, you know, Sonya owes her loyalty. But I don't know how she doesn't see that Sonya is a flip-flopper. I don't know who she closer to but clearly she caught in the middle so Sonya starts telling Candy exactly what was said in the conversation between Courtney Sheree and Sonya before Ross's party and apparently Courtney said some more things that we didn't see get home oh, no. No. so she asked Sonya what she said and y'all Sonya the lad don't you know candy gonna see you lying you know you're gonna have to address that at the reunion right talking about she was defending candy girl you was kicking the whole time so then we move on to candy who's doing a tasting for blaze which is her steak and seafood restaurant um i think they're looking for a new chef basically they have to start the restaurant from scratch because covid came and messed a lot of things up so yeah they're working on that restaurant meanwhile todd is still trying to get this mexican restaurant the Olay gang <laughs> which i they have been talking about for seasons and i actually thought that was a great idea but i'm just not sure if they're gonna be able to handle three restaurants a lot of people say the food is overrated now i've never been to i mean i've been to atlanta <laughs> I've never been to Atlanta. I've been to Atlanta, but I've never been to the restaurant. So I don't know. But everybody's saying it's overrated, child. So I don't know. Should they really do another restaurant? But yeah, Todd wants to do this restaurant. Candy is hesitant. And I'm kind of starting to see what Todd is saying a little bit. Candy always wants to start a business. Like she started a new business every season. But anytime Todd wants to start something, she does get hesitant. It almost seems like she doesn't accept anybody's ideas except her own. So in walks the current chef, which is also Candy's cousin, which is also the person who got sh in her restaurant a while ago. If y'all remember hearing about that in the news, it was like some sort of personal, um, personal issue between the two and they took it outside. 
and you know, it went down. So he's at the tasting as well because he is the current chef, but they're trying to avoid talking about the case, but he's sitting there in a sling. So it's like, it's a big elephant in the room. So the producer, Eric, which is the same producer we saw on Potomac last season um, that Candace was talking to, he stops the scene and he goes, and he asks them, are they gonna talk about the shooting? I ask you a question. What? What you need, cuz? We're not gonna talk about the elephant in the room. We can't talk about it. Cuz of the legal situation. Okay. Now let's talk about that for a moment. Do y'all think Candy should have gotten into it or do y'all understand where they were coming from? Now I personally do because A, it is a part of something that is currently going on with you at the moment. If this was something that was happening while y'all weren't filming, I don't feel like she should have had to talk about it. But it is something that you're going through while you're filming and you got this man in a scene. So yeah, I do feel like you should talk about it a little bit. Because I never watched Candy in the game. So I never even knew what the dude looked like. But the moment he was sitting on camera with the sling, I had already assumed that's who it was. And I was wondering about it. I was waiting to see if they was going to talk about it. So imagine how all the other viewers were feeling. And imagine if they didn't talk about it. Imagine if they went through that whole scene with the cousin sitting there in the sling and they just completely ignored that and just talked about food. With all of us knowing who he is and what happened. It would be so many tweets like, oh, production is favoring Candy. Candy doesn't have to talk about her life like everybody else. Candy gets special treatment. I guarantee they would have been dragging Candy talking about, you know, how she doesn't have to do this. Now she's production's favorite. I do feel like it was necessary to address it. Like, don't just bring this man in the scene and then act like he ain't there. I understand why he's there. He's the kitchen manager. He's doing taste tests. I get that part. But like, it would have been odd to just have him there and nobody to say anything. I get it, it's a legal case, you can't say too many details, but even what she ended up saying was fine. Like, say something. There was a gentleman. Basically, he came to work late and he came to work intoxicated. He got a little irate with my cousin who was kitchen manager. They went outside and the guy shot my cousin. How you been feeling though? You good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. bye. That's just my opinion, um, but y'all let me know what y'all thought about that. So Kenya and Brooklyn go on a play date with Brooklyn's best friend and her mother, who Kenya has a good relationship with. So she starts talking to the mom and she starts talking about her new man, Rio, and how crazy she is about him. And are we going to see him this season? I'm so sick of Kenya saying that she's... Kenya is dating every season and she really, really, really likes the guy every season, but we never see the guy. And I'm not necessarily accusing her of paying guys or having fake relationships, but... How do you have all these relationships and we never seen one? I just don't get why she keeps coming on a reality show every season to say that she's seriously dating somebody just for them to not show up. Either A, it's not as serious as she's saying it is and she, she not bringing them around because it's not that serious and she just trying to make it seem like she's seriously dating somebody and she just trying to make it seem like she's not lonely. It's either that or B, it's not a real relationship. One of the two, because I'm sick of this. I'm sick of Kenya talking about how she blah, how she really, really, really likes this guy, and she like, and then we never see the guy. I'm over it. I'm over it. So then Sonya goes to dinner with Sheree. She's being a true flip flopper, like really going back and forth from Candy to Sheree to Candy to Sheree. She is the new bone carrier this season. Sheree not neutral no more, so she can't be the bone carrier. Sonya is the new bone carrier. So then Sheree and Sonya start talking about Kenya. Go this whole route of angry, almost angry. Aggressive, probably. Aggressive. The you know same thing. thing. Sonya is the new Cynthia at this point. She just go wherever the wind blow. Sonya agrees with whoever she's talking to at the moment. So Drew's in the studio with Ralph and another guy. I don't know, I guess a friend of them. I don't know. And he's asking Drew how it is working with Ralph. And it was the most awkward silence before she said good now that we know how y'all story ends and we know a divorce is brewing you're lying <laughs> so we end the episode at the she in by sheree uh, she by she in no she by sheree we end the episode <laughs> we end the episode at the she by sheree warehouse sheree is complaining per usual complaining because the clothes came wrinkled and she got to pay extra to iron them always complaining about something as if she actually pays them people to do their job correctly 
So Kenya walks in and then they start going back and forth about the party. Kenya tries to explain herself. The other day, let's talk about that. I was shocked because I wasn't like I was coming for him. It yeah. didn't have to go there. Okay, so when, when, when did I deserve to be cursed out? I'm waiting for that part. So both of you guys got elevated. But Sheree explains that she already knew about the DM. I had already saw the uh, message. He showed me the DM. You said six months. I said at least it not. was over six months ago. You said it was about six months. So then Kenya brings up the fact that uh, Martell said that plenty of people DM Kenya and she probably accepts it. And Sheree start playing dumb. Y'all know how Sheree do. She don't never remember nothing. They are not agreeing. Sheree is sticking with Martell. That's her man and she's sticking beside him. It's it's well, this is a no, hoes before bros. No, Hold bros on. before we bros. Wait, are we bros? In this case, we're bros. <laughs> He's the hoe. So Sheree delivers another confessional read. Who is writing these reads for Sheree? Is it Martel? Is it Martel? Is Martel giving her these reads? This girl that said, Kenya constantly calls black men aggressive and she sees them as a target because she don't have one. <laughs> Martel is writing her reads. I've, I've concluded that. So yeah, the episode ends there. So next week is gonna be lit too. We get some tea from BravoCon. BravoCon, I thought that it was a weekend of like celebrating, yeah. but every time we got on stage, Something. the bullshit happens. I could replace Todd. I probably would have picked anyone that had a decent job. Hey, I just need her to respect my marriage. Me. Mama Joyce and Todd going at it again. Poor Todd. Poor Todd. He's just going to have to accept that for the rest of his life. Mama Joyce is never going to let up. Candace will be in the next episode. Can we talk about how Candace is slowly taking over Potomac? Candace doing the crossovers. Candace done made it to Atlanta. Candace is that girl. Bring out a special guest. If I can do this tonight, I am on my way to my dreams. Miss Drew Sedora. And she was up on stage with her hair blowing, her leotard, looking like Beyonce. She looked good. Candy and Courtney get into another intense argument. <laughs> she said that she went to some and she brought the hood out. The thing that triggers me is that you don't know me. And that you're saying, oh, she bring up it up. Put it on tight. Bring everybody out. And... Marlo and Drew get into it for unknown reasons. All we see is Marlo sitting there constantly saying, my blood nephew is dead. My blood I, nephew is I dead. My I blood nephew is feel, dead. But you're feel talking about it. No, you feel acting about how the My feel. nephew is dead, bitch! Well, I don't know what that was about. But yeah, next week gonna be lit. This week was lit. Last week was lit. This is a good season. They done proved me all the way wrong because I was not excited for season 15, especially when I saw them OGs. I was like, oh, they are desperate. <laughs> they are grasping for straws at this point. But boy, was I wrong. But uh, yeah, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode in the comments down below. Stay happy, healthy, and all of that good stuff. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye. <laughs>